we are in the shop today. This is the Alley Cat 1, the historic cart. Restored original Alley Cat, the very rare, not many survived. This one's had new main rails put in the frame. We kept the original pedals, original steering hoop out of it, the original steering shaft, steering hub, rear axle hangers, front axle. Still got a steel seat back in it, but the uh, it's got an aluminum floor pan in it now. Has the original engine mount on it. Been upgraded to late model disc brakes. These had a swing mount on them. Mounted in the rear, not in the front. Kept the throttle and brake rod coming back through the chassis like, like they had them. Except that when you get to the tail end, obviously you, I've changed them in order to make the uh, rear brake assembly function. And we upgraded the opposite side so that it actually is a good system for running your throttle, which is basically a modern style system using compression fittings and the heavy nylon tube. Which is a major safety upgrade that really if you're going to be at, at these events running these carts you really should do this with a disc brake and set up. Yeah, this has got an MC20 on it, uh, dual carbs, top and bottom carburation system. Uh, this MC20 has been all reconfigured on the inside to be just like the modern more modern, uh, later Mac 91s were. So it's 9 ported, it's uh, boost ported, exhaust ported, transfer ported. Tip the card up, you can see the throttle system on the side. How we mounted that. How it functions, and then you can see the throttle system here on how the dual carbs function. So one cable gets to run all of this. Yeah, it's a pretty trick. And being this is going to be in the historic class, I wanted to try and run the top and bottom carburetor like they did back in the day. Don't see many people running that system today. Throttle cable is always a problem until you figure out how to do it. It took a lot of work to get it to this point. We did put Azusa wheels on it because we are going to run it. Um, it was set up to have go powers on it. Um, Go powers are pretty rare and expensive, so you hate to have something happen and ding one up. The original spindles were three quarter inch axles in the spindles. I had to make new spindles because the go power wheel is a little narrower than the uh, Azusa wheel, so the when I went to the Azusa wheels, then the original three quarter inch go power axle wasn't uh, long enough to be able to mount Azusa wheels, so I had to change the front spindles. Front spindles were extremely short.
Our friend Megan did the upholstery. She did a nice job making the seats up for it. Yeah, you'll notice the upholstery looks a lot like our Alley Cat 2's. A little different than the original Alley mm -hmm. Cats were, but... <clears throat> it's along the same design. Yeah. They had the pleats in and the square back look. And it is... It is one of those things too, when I sat in it, it's a lot... A lot tighter, a lot shorter. So before we go to the track with this, and this is this is all original. It's got the original steering column in it. I'm going to put a longer shaft in and move the steering wheel back about two inches, because when you get in this cart, the original steering wheel is down here, hit me in the kneecaps. Yeah. Nice. This must have been made for people that were five foot four. Well, it's like we always say with the rear engines, it's if you were our height, you know, we're not exactly tall nowadays, but if you were our height back then, you were pretty much too tall for a lot of these cars. I know what they were trying to accomplish here was setting the axle back, leaving the frame rails a little longer, and then they were trying to get the pedals to come out over the tie rod but uh, eh, I still kind of missed it I mean it, it works a lot better if, if this axle on our alley cats I build I don't kick this axle way back like this I leave it forward and that way I can get the pedals pedals are actually you know way out here because the tie rods are, are, are clear out here so I can clear the pedals and have more leg room in the chassis um, Back in, back in the days of these carts, they didn't have it all figured out yet, so when yeah. you're restoring an original and you're going to run it, uh, you also got all the original problems. Yep. There's a lot of reasons why these companies stayed in business or didn't stay in business. If you didn't progress and make the changes, you went out of business. Yeah, and this was one of the companies that went out of business right away. Well, and then they also got hit with the downturn of carting, you know. They, mm -hmm. they, came, they came in right at the, when it was still moving up in sales, but that was, you know, probably six months, eight months later, then it started going the other way, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, uh, attrition's going to take, take all these companies out of, the, out of the game. Once you got into 62 and 63, things started sliding downhill pretty fast. And we'll kind of show them what, what we mean by looking at the alley cat right behind Yeah, here we are in the shop today. Haven't seen this cart in a while. Just uh, pulled it out, cleaned it up a little bit. A little bit of semi-dirty. <laughs> Yeah, it had a little, little bit but, of you dust know, this on is it. An, this is an original. Um, yep. And boy... You go a long ways in this country to find find another one. I know where there's three or four of them. Um, one of them just surfaced here about six months ago in, in beautiful condition, but boy, they're scarce. Yeah, majority of them, we've talked about this before, majority of them broke at the seat back. This one was broken. Yeah, this, this was broken about six places along each side. This one's been all gusseted in on the underneath side. And the back side here to eliminate all of that. Yep. Now this cart right now, it's owned by Stroker Ace. I did the restoration on it. I'm going to run this cart for about a year, year and a half, and then it goes back to Stroker Ace. So probably at some point, if somebody's interested in this, it'll be available to them. Maybe Chuck wants to keep it and put it on the wall, but you never know. It's a nice cart. We appreciate Chuck sending parts and pieces for it. Yeah, Stroker Ace has come through on this. I mean, he sent me the broken up chassis, and, and he supplied the tires, the wheels, the tubes, the axle, the, 
the steering wheel, um, you know, just he's come through and, and, and furnished a lot of the parts for this. And, you know, I've furnished some things. He paid for the upholstery to be done. Um, I paid for the powder coat, and of course, of course all the metal work is on me. Um, so it's just kind of a combination effort to get an opportunity to be able to see one of these in real, touch one, drive one, have one, um, because they're just so hard to find. Um, there's a lot of rups out there, a lot of bugs out there, things like that, but very few alley cats, so... We've had a lot of success with this basic des chassis design. We made a few changes in it so that we fit in them better, but, but this is this is the original. We were just talking. This is this is one of the cool parts about it. Is is that rod running all the way back to the brakes like that? And with the, the throttle. Yep, and the throttle. I mean, it had actually those loops on the frame. That the rod, the rod would run through. It's very cool. A bit of the brakes in the throttle side. So there you have it. That's uh, the Alley Cat One, the historic cart that uh, we did the restoration on earlier uh, this year in the garage here. Sean, go! Yeah, one of the other things I do, I put the snaps in on upholstery myself after Megan gets done sewing them up. And I put more snaps in than most people do because I can't stand it when they only put two snaps in a side piece and then it comes loose on you when you're out on a track racing. Right. <clears throat> and you are squashed into this. Trying to take it kind of a peek down here with your knees from over this angle. It's actually too close. <laughs> Funny. Boy, that's a... <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to crush your ribs and dip. <laughs> and, uh... Okay, make the face of a, a funny guy down there now. <laughs> ah, ah, humped over. <laughs> <laughs>